Welcome to More Than a Song, where you get a chance to experience great music in an intimate concert setting. You also get a chance to go beyond the lyrics with the artist to get the God experience revealed in their journey. Hi, I'm Denise Graves, and on today's show, we're featuring Sherry Kagey. She got her start as a worship leader in a small Southern California church. Nine albums and nine number one singles later, Sherry continues to be a mainstay on Inspirational Radio. She starts the program today with Lucky to be Breathing Your Air. Lucky to be breathing your air, lucky to be filling this space, lucky to be counted as one who gets to know amazing grace, lucky to be one of your own, lucky to be never alone, right from the day I was born. riches are stored and in ways that are quite unexpected I have learned a most humbling truth that a faith that has never been tested is just growth that is long Oh, 
crazy, but I'm just in love with the Lord, for he has been faithful enough just to fill me and take me to heights I have never explored. If I'm never broken, how can I be much more alive and the more that my spirit rejoices the more that I grow and I thrive if surrender is seen as a weakness then the lowliest beggar I'll be I'll embrace every struggle with meekness cause I know that it's making me free Sherry's unique style beautifully expresses her heartfelt lyrics. Recently, Amanda Brocker sat down with Sherry to hear about how she hopes to inspire us to live more fearlessly for Christ. Well, I am so excited to be sitting here with you, Sherry Keggy. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> Thank so, you. Tell me, where did you grow up? I grew up in Southern California. Um, my parents are both still living, still living there. I have a sister out there. So I'm a, I'm a California girl, but not in the, the stereotypical sense. Wow, in Pittsburgh, <laughs> Pennsylvania. Well, right. We're so glad you're here. When did you develop a relationship with Jesus? You know, um, he was pursuing me from an early age. I um, have fond memories of my childhood church um, and learning in, about God and playing the church offertory and um, having my first communion and getting baptized and mm -hmm. being in Bible studies and youth group, that sort of thing. So from an early age, I always, I think, believed in a childlike way that there was a God um, who existed and who, who'd created me, who had loved me. Um, but it was really my freshman year in high school that I began to um, have more of those big life questions that we all have. You know, what, what does it all mean? Why are we here? And, yeah. and so getting into the Word of God more during, during that time, um, I found the answers to those questions and knew that God had created me for relationship for Him, um, with, with Him. And so in that, I grew a lot in my faith in those years just by immersing myself in the Word. Amen. That's where <laughs> the answers are at. When did you start singing or know that you had a gift from God to sing and to play the piano? Um, I really piano was sort of my thing like everyone as a child has their thing that they're good at and so for me that was piano I took piano lessons from an early age age seven and played for all the talent shows and things like that and singing was something I always did but not necessarily on stage until I got involved in church worship uh, and there I sang my first solo to an Amy Grant track at a little church in Southern California and eventually that church hired me as their worship coordinator, worship leader, mm -hmm. and it was there that I began to write my first songs of love to the Lord that we would sing as a church family. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So do you remember the first song? Like what was yes, it? my first uh, worship song was, uh, it's from Psalm 91, actually inspired by Psalm 91, mm -hmm. and it's called, You, O Lord, Are My Refuge. Praise God. Yes, and that yes. later was recorded on my first album that released in 94. And how old so, were you? 
Uh, early 20s, I would say, something Definitely like that. Definitely <laughs> a gift from God. Oh, my goodness. Mm -hmm. Well, let me ask you something. Mm -hmm. I read on your blog, this was something that you're known for saying, mm -hmm. and it's quoted. I've often said, when we come to the end of ourselves, we come to the beginning of Jesus. Mm -hmm. I just thought that's profound, and I wanted you to expound yeah. on that for me. Yeah, well, I think we all have uh, commit the sin of self-sufficiency, maybe, or self-reliance. Mm -hmm. um, and it's sometimes it takes removing some of these props or these things that we've leaned on in life um, to, to help us see our need for Jesus, you know. Mm -hmm. And I went through an epic year in back in 2010 uh, where there was a lot of change and upheaval in my life where I definitely came to the end of myself but God met me and in a six month period of time it was my my daughter's high school graduation my son's wedding um, my grandmother passed away my grandfather passed away two months after her had to do a short sale on the home we would lived in as a family for wow. several years in Nashville I'd since made a move to Nashville and all of that my 22 year marriage to my high school sweetheart was ending in divorce and um, so I was very much you know at the end of myself and so fearful of what my future would be but but I went to uh, my home church there was an evening service and the pastor preached a sermon on the three things we need to survive and I was very much in survival mode and um, he said simply one we need air mm -hmm. two we need food and water and he spoke of sustenance number three we need God's presence and so while I had all this fear about the unknown, would I be single the rest of my life? Where was I going to live as we were selling the house? All of this, um, as I counted up those three, I realized I had everything I needed in Christ um, and that um, he truly is enough. I understood the all sufficiency of Christ like I never had before. And uh, the verse that like his grace is sufficient. Well, it really is. He really is enough. <laughs> Amen. Well, tell me, what are you doing today with the gift of music and singing. Where have your talents taken you? Well, I've recorded several albums through the years. I just released my ninth album, and uh, God has opened the door for me to go from singing at that little local church to singing all over and um, ministering. I do a lot of women's events. I do some speaking now as well, because there's only so much you can say in a three-minute song, right? That's right. And, um, and just through life, gaining some testimony. As you know, the longer you walk with the Lord and the more life experience you have, the more there is to share. And it's, um, it's my joy to testify to anyone who will listen, right? That's right. <laughs> well, you were talking in the back room just a little bit about, you know, some of the workshops that you've done mm -hmm. and the response of the women. Is there any example you can give us of a lady you know you ministered to? You know, oh, I, I talk sometimes about how God brings beauty from ashes. Mm -hmm. And um, and there's some that will come up and tell me their epic story. And, and they'll, you know, they'll they'll say, I'm, I'm still in the ashes or something to that effect. Mm -hmm. And then I'm one and I remember what it was like to be in the ashes um, with all these losses and things that you didn't want in your life. But um, how faithful God is to bring beauty from those things. And I'm one that can say to that sister, hang on, I don't know how he's going to do it, but God is going to use this very thing in your life to do a greater work in you to make me, to make you more useful in the kingdom, you know, for his purposes. So, um, yeah, this countless stories That's like that. Powerful, <laughs> very powerful. And it's because you're full of the word of God mm -hmm. that you learned from yes. a young and <laughs> to put the word of God in yes. you. Well, one more question, if I can mm -hmm. just ask, what is your latest album, your latest thing you're working on or it's yes. been done. Yes, my new album is called No Longer My Own. Mm -hmm. And uh, that comes from a song that was actually taken from um, this covenant prayer by John Wesley that I stumbled upon in my reading. I was actually reading a book about the empty nest phase because I'm in that season, both my kids grown. And um, I was so compelled and inspired by this prayer. I wrote it down in my journal and I just knew that one day I was gonna make that into a song. And so now I'm singing the songs from that project. Sherry, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you. Put me to doing, put me to suffering, put me to what you will. Let me be full or let me have nothing to you I wholeheartedly yield for I am no longer my own but yours I am no longer my own but yours let me be 
working or lay me aside exalted for you or brought low all to your pleasure i'm at your disposal father son and holy ghost for i am no longer my own but yours i am no longer my own but yours and this covenant now made on earth let it be satisfied in heaven this Thank you so much. So that was the, um, the title of my latest project, and it was inspired by this poem uh, that I came across, or it's actually a prayer. It's called The Covenant Prayer um, that most people attribute to John Wesley, founder of the Methodist Church. And, um, and I just was so moved by the wording, the sentiment, um, the surrender in the prayer. I remember writing it down in my journal and said, I'm going to make a song of that one day. And then when it came to... Um, uh, uh, trying to figure out an album title, you know, you sit with your s list of songs, and and a lot of times you pull it from a title. And I just asked the Lord, okay, what would you have here? And and that title just stood out to me because those four words say so much, you know, like Lord, I'm yours to do with as you will, you know. And so um, it's a beautiful place um, to come to, you know, after after some struggle in life, you just finally go, okay, Lord, I'm yours. Um, you know, my home church back in Nashville, there's a there's a a blank space in the bulletin where you can write um, sermon notes or whatever, and at the at the bottom it has a question: So what? You know, based on what you've heard this morning, is the Lord prompting you or nudging you towards something? Is there you know a conviction, an action step, whatever? What is your response? So what? And so I feel like this song kind of is my life's so what. <laughs> I was shown grace, so I will be gracious. I was shown mercy, so I will be merciful and kind. I have been loved to be lovely, yes, but that I might love well. I have heard the truth, so I can tell. Though it was painful, I have been healed, and now I am speaking healing words. You gave me strength to be strong enough to carry someone else. I have heard the truth, so I can tell. Tell it to my neighbor, tell it to my brother, tell it to the woman down the street. Tell it to the children, tell it to the broken, live it so that everyone can see my Jesus.
so that others might believe. I have known joy, so I can be joyful. Been broken down, but now I'm breaking free. You gave me faith to be faithful, yes. So I can tell. I hope you enjoyed getting a glimpse at Cherry Keggy's story and are inspired by her songs. Thank you for watching More Than a Song. Contact us at family at ctvn.org or call us for prayer. Until next time, keep looking for the message behind the music and listen for the song he sings over you. I'm Denise Graves and I'll see you next week. Oh, come